Hey, how's it going? And today we are going to explore creating a path and the path track in the sequencer and how we can use the camera rig rail to create a basic spline. So this is what this looks like if I go into the game. I just have this cube following along the the spline and it's on a animated on a path track. So it's pretty cool. I have to say that Getting comfortable with the spline takes a little bit of practice, but not too much. Then you can create some pretty cool animations. I was actually inspired to do this by watching the Nike tutorial, and they talked about the path track, but they didn't really explain how they got to that, <laughs> how they got to where they were. So anyway, this is basically it. I created kind of a convoluted path, but anyway, let's uh, go into this. I'm going to just end the game here. Well, here's another one I did where it's just on the ground. But it's kind of cool because it looks like a uh, a creature moving almost. Oh, it's leaving a little trail afterwards. So it's super cool. Okay, so I'll be back in just a minute to show you how we can set up something like this. Okay, we're ready to start. So... Our spline tool is going to be our camera rig rail. So as far as I can tell, that is the spline tool in Unreal Editor for Fortnite. And it's a perfectly good tool. It's just not called a spline tool. It's called the camera rig rail. Go to Window, Place Actors, and we're going to search for the camera rig rail, which is right here. And just drag it into the scene. And this can be really, really counterintuitive and confusing in the very beginning because when you bring it in it just looks like all that is here is a rig rail and what you have to pay attention to is when it's selected is over here in the details panel you'll see that it has a spline component so there's the rig rail here and we can actually turn off the visualization of the rig rail and you don't even know it's there so if I just click that off you don't even see the rail so we don't want to show the the rail visualization at the end Mostly we don't need it because it's in the way and blocking our view. Now what's confusing is when you come in, what may not be obvious is that by default this rig rail brings in two spline points, but you can't see them. And so obviously that's kind of an issue. So what you can do is when you're working on the spline, make sure you're selected over here on the rail spline component. And you see once I do, you'll see the points become clear now. I'm just going to go ahead and turn that off because it's just blocking our view right now. This is a spline point and this is a spline point. And what's confusing about it is that each spline point has two handles and sometimes the handles look like spline points themselves but these are used for, if you click on one, it's used for bending the spline. So, But we don't want to need to bend it right now, we just need to make a bunch of spline points. I'm going to select on the first spline point and I actually want this to be up in the air. So what I'm going to do is just click and drag and you'll see when I do the spline point goes well I want this spline point to come with it so I'm going to drag, come and click it and drag it up in the air too. So I wanted this to be in the air. It can be difficult working with the splines from depending on this perspective so what I've actually found easier to do is to go into the top perspective here and then you can move around a lot easier and it becomes easier to manipulate the spines and it's easier to see the difference between the handles and the spine points themselves. Now to add more spine points I'm going to try to make a circular a circular path here. With the second spine point selected I'm going to press alt click on this and I'll add another point point. and that's all I'm doing is pressing alt and duplicating these spine points. And to start, I'm just making what looks like just a square. So it's not doesn't look like it's much of a circle at the moment, but we will manipulate these points and we'll make it a circle. So I'm just holding Alt and left clicking to add additional points. There's an option here, you'll see to close the loop, but we don't want to close the loop just yet. So I'm gonna keep dragging here and get kind of as close as I can to this point. Now with that done, what I can do is come over here and you see where it says I'm um, clicked on the spline component I can go close loop and now it's it's closed which is great so now it's just a question of manipulating these points 
and this is good practice for using the tool. So if there's a point and I don't want it there, like I don't need this one here, I can just select it and hit delete and it deletes it. And if I lose sight of everything, which I just did, I can click back on the rig rail and make sure you're on the spline component over here. Now to move a spline point is very easy. You just select it and then just click and drag it in. So all I need to do is just reorganize these points now that I have them positioned into more of a circle here like this. So it just takes a, a minute and then like I said I don't need this many spline points so I'm just deleting the ones that I don't think I need and here just positioning them to more of maybe it's more of an oval than a circle you know but you get the idea of how you can manipulate it right if you want to soften the corners that's real easy to do too so actually this once you get the hang of this it's actually a very easy tool to use so you could you could mess around with this for days and if you want to add soften a, a corner you just grab the handle too you can click the, on the handle like here and then you can really bend the corners and stuff like that you can affect the curve this way too so here maybe this one needs to come out a little bit more and you know you can just play around with this all day and here I like this because the handles are clearer to me. so it's not a hundred percent of a circle but it's good enough in the words of mediocrities it's good enough so I'm gonna come back into perspective mode and there is you'll see a perfectly cool spine path so we're done and you don't even know you have the you're using the rig rail honestly you don't even know that it's a rig rail but it's a spine first off we need something to animate so uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click and go to the blueprint class here get a building prop double click on this come up here and I'm gonna get a cube so we can see its orientation I'm gonna on the scale I'm just gonna drop it down to like 0.5 to make it smaller and we can just throw a material on this just something to make it look more interesting and then compile and save that and now we have something that we can animate and I just throw this on the scene like that. There's just two more things. We need to make a sequence and get a cinematic sequence device. So let's get the cinematic sequence device right here. You need these whenever you're working with sequences. And then what we can do is go back here now, clear that search bar, and I'm just going to get a level sequence here. So I'm gonna select the cube in the scene then I'm going to double click into my level sequence, come up here to track, add to sequencer, add a new blueprint. Then I'm going to hit control and my scroll will out. I'm going to grab this red marker and pull it out so I have a longer animation. With the cube still selected, we just hit this plus sign. And then I'm going to go to path, new binding, and you'll see our rig rail right there because it recognizes it as a spline. And see how it popped it to the spline path now. It traverses on a scale for, starting from 0 to 1. So 0 is the beginning point and 1 is the end point. So here on this path, if I click to the end, it's already set to 1. So it's already set to travel the length of this spline. So the spline travels on a path starting at 0 and ending at 1. So you'll see as I drag this, if you look on path, you see how the values are changing and it goes all the way up to one and then what I can do is now that we have that set up I just click on the cinematic sequence device I get my sequence right there I want it to loop on playback and then I want it to play on player spawn so I just go to player spawn and go on player spawn and as far as I know that's all I need to do the only other thing is that on the camera rig rail there is this option here to lock orientation and that'll just keep the cube facing squarely along the pathway so if you want it to travel that way if you want it to look in different directions animated to spin in fact we could do that if we wanted to but that might take a little bit more time but I, I would just come here to the new blueprint and I, on its transform track I could make it spin around 
while it's going on this pathway. There's all kinds of things that, that you could do with this once you're at this level. I think we're ready to go. If I hit play, you can see it going around. So that's all you have to do. I could put this into Fortnite, but you'd basically just see the, the same thing happening if I went into play. This is what exactly what you would see. So anyway, I hope you found this helpful. Take care. Have a great day.